All right, Sunny's vlog, June the 12th, 2014. Just want to give an update on the huge victory we had on the uh, uh, actual swearing in and um, uh, confirming elections at the Warren County GOP. Uh, an excellent major thing happened. Uh, when I first got elected in 2010, uh, we had a major victory there um, in that regard because of the fact that we had a huge Tea Party faction that had to come in and had uh, taken over a good portion of the Warren County GOP. We were about a third at the time, plus you had your establishment and then you had your conservative caucus that kind of had their own rules of engagement, if you will. But nevertheless, um, 20, uh, in 2010, we actually had the major victories going on all across the country with... Um, uh, certain governors getting in and a couple of senators and a lot of particular, it's not only just state reps, but also congressmen as well. Uh, arguably, one of our good victories was the electing of Nikki Haley of South Carolina, who's actually proved to be a pretty good governor in her own right. Um, actually, I would say arguably has actually surpassed Ohio in uh, the number of jobs that um, has come to her state. And she's been fighting the National Labor Board on top of it because Obama keeps attacking them on uh, the Boeing situation. So, nevertheless, that's uh, an issue in of itself. But I wanted to let you give you a report as I had uh, promised that I would do. Uh, either various mediums, either blogs, vlogs, or tweets of what's going on here on thomasforohio.org. Um, this is the white slate sheet that was featured at the Warren County GOP meeting in particular. And um, <clears throat> most of the particular people that we had put on the slate um, definitely had made it on there. Uh, essentially, in a nutshell, the Tea Party runs the Warren County GOP. We're not talking the fake Tea Party. We're talking the real Tea Party. It's not a complete Ron Paul revolution takeover like it was in Iowa. Uh, the Ron Paul um, Republicans basically run the, Ohio the Iowa GOP. But this is definitely a major step here. Uh, with the last session, Lori Viers had somehow managed to um, ne necessarily garner control and shut down the Warren County GOP in many regards. Um, so we had, they had no meetings for almost two years. Uh, a bunch of shenanigans went on. Their uh, executive chairman, uh, Nichols, uh, I heard him speak at the... Uh, Lincoln Day dinner uh, a couple years ago at um, when Mary Taylor was supposed to be the keynote speaker and I thought he had a lot to say. It sounded to me he was definitely up our line on anything. But actually he's actually stood up and said he didn't really want to endorse Mitt Romney because in fact he knew Mitt Romney was a joke. And um, and the, the, the conservatives and some of the establishment Republicans attacked him and literally kicked him out of the damn way and Lori Virus Russell control even as uh, vice chair of the executive committee and basically started running the show. So either he said fuck it and abdicated his, his position or uh, he was basically marginalized. So um, I don't know the whole thing because I wasn't there uh, on that session. But uh, when I ran for uh, central committee this term as well as state central committee, I'm happy to report that not only did I win my precinct uh, wholehandedly, I actually got more votes my second uh, run than I did my first and I handedly beat down my challenger uh, uh, arguably say three to one. So uh, I want to thank everyone who voted for me. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I am uh, honored my pledge to make sure that I communicate with you and let you know what's going on within the Warren County GOP. Okay, uh, good news is uh, Chris Cook, who is a diehard conservative, is now our new Central Committee Chair, so that's definitely a plus. Uh, John Roche, who I don't know... Um, anything about, uh, I abstain from voting for because, again, if I don't know the candidates or I don't uh, think that they're qualified, I will not vote for them. So I'm giving you a report on who I voted for and why and why I did not. Uh, treasurer was Steve Lamb. I've heard of him. I know nothing about him, so I, I abstain from voting. Secretary was Sharon Poe. Uh, I don't know her very well, but um, um, I have talked to her a few times, so at least she's communicable. Um, again, I'm looking forward to working with her to uh, make sure that uh, as secretary she does a good job. Now, there's a large slate of at-large members of the executive committee. There were actually 23 names on the white slate. There was an orange slate, which I didn't get a chance to get a copy of, but I did take a picture of. Um, there are many candidates that were on there. Um, there was 25 on the orange slate, 
So we made it easy, one of two ways. We said that uh, we'd either vote white slate and write white slate, which means all 23. Uh, and we then we added on later on, uh, nominated two more people to fill the, those blanks. Or we voted uh, orange slate, and we used the orange uh, uh, for the tabulations. White slate won uh, pretty wholeheartedly. Um, I could tell you that since most of these people either did not know or uh, don't personally care for, but I could tell you honestly, everyone I, I know I've heard of San, Sandra Tungrel, but I've never actually talked to her. Um, but I voted for three of the members on here, and in order of appearance, I voted for Kelly Coles, Ray Warwick, and Bill Cook, who's Chris Cook's brother. So uh, it could be pronounced Coke, but. Uh, he goes by Cook. I actually know a guy in high school named Jake Cook uh, who uh, pronounced it Cook as opposed to Koch or Coke. So, um, <clears throat> nevertheless, I had no relation to the Cook brothers, of course. Uh, but it's just giving you uh, a saying. Now, when they did the, the 24 and 25 votes for the white slate, uh, I abstained from that because I didn't know exactly how the process would work. I was going to insert a buddy of mine who was in Precinct uh, uh, 70. But I wasn't quite sure, and since he wasn't there in in being present, um, it's a little hard to nominate somebody who's actually not readily available. So that's how the the rules work generally. Now, for executive uh, committee officers, I did vote for party chairman for Ray Warwick. Um, now I abstained from the other three. Now the two, three that were nominated on the sheet was Linda Oda for vice chair, Randy Coven for treasurer, and Stacy Morris for secretary. Uh, I abstained from all three of those. Um, because of the fact that I think Linda Oda has not done uh, an exemplary job on some things she's good at other things I think she plays too much uh, uh, neocon politics so but however when I voted uh, in 2012 uh, actually be quite honest Linda Oda was the only Republican I voted for uh, during that election so um, nevertheless this particular thing here. Now the at-large executive committee board was a very interesting situation uh, Lori Viers withdrew uh, Pete Peters Patterson, for whatever reason, was um, was not there or, or withdrew or whatever the case may be. So Lori Fenwick, who interesting enough was not only in the white slate, she's also in the orange slate. Um, and of course Kelly Coles and Greg Ball. Um, since there was basically meant to be five, and Lori was uh, double tapped for both of them, we basically just took the two opening slots that were left on the orange slate and mixed them in here with the white slate. I don't have the names right in front of me, unfortunately, uh, but basically um, we just merged the the five open members left of the at-large executive committee board and um, voted them in. The audit committee was a very interesting situation. Uh, Jim Regano surprisingly withdrew. Um, I was, but I asked him afterwards. He said he had um, he was kind of busy with other things, but he thought he could uh, better serve the party in, in another uh, uh, faculty. So uh, we actually talked about uh, maybe talking to the chairman about coming forth with a communication uh, media board or something, so we can be more active with the website, the um, Facebook, and the Twitter account because uh, they definitely are lacking some serious um, regular. Uh, postings and things of that nature so that's something we're looking at as well so I definitely will back Jim Regano on that and if there's a board I like to try to get on that because I think I would be fairly savvy the audit committee uh, interesting enough since Mary Jo Kubicki didn't get elected um, I believe that was why she was basically cut out Jim Regano withdrew uh, Doug Greathouse was nominated um, who's actually going to show up on a future episode of the Sunday Thomas show as a pundit so we get to talk shop about some interesting politics uh, Donna Lynch was also voted in, and I didn't catch who the third one was. I think it was uh, something Gilb, Steve Gilb or Gary, Greg Gilb or somebody. I forget, but the last name was Gilb, G-I-L-B. So that was the audit committee. Interesting enough, though, um, if someone had brought up a couple of different things. Uh, one was um, on this particular issue here, um, after they had already closed proceedings to um, nominate, uh, person raised his hand and asked, "Well, should we? Uh, can we at least tell us what exactly what the audit committee is for?" And they said, "Well, yeah, actually, uh, we haven't had an audit with the party's money in actually three years, which is pretty pretty despicable. So we don't know exactly how much money we have or what we got to work with, um, and also um, some other um, issues there too. So, actually, if I had known that, just for kicks and grins, I would have raised my hand at least nominated myself, regardless if I had won or lost, I would have nominated myself." Uh, just this, um, so I could uh, be a little bit more uh, direct use within the Republican Party here in Warren County. So again, I kind of wish I had 
known the procedure a little bit better. So, uh, you know, experience is always the best teacher. So, nevertheless, uh, something comes up uh, when I run for re-election again in 2016, um, I'm definitely going to uh, be a more active participant, that's for sure. Um, I also confirmed with Chairman Cook that we will continue at least the two-minute. I'm going to try to get the, go to a five-minute um, discussion session platform where we basically talk shop at the end of each session and make sure that they stay in the damn room when whoever wants to come up and speak and talk politics or, or issues within the party that we can do so. Um, where we we had I got Chairman Fornshell before to do that. Um, they quickly uh, circumvented that and took a quick break and came back. We lost two-thirds of the damn crowd, so nobody really got to listen to much of anything. My first two speeches why were for Ron Paul for president and why we should, he should be our nominee. Two questions that were brought up that were very interesting. One is uh, especially Chris Cook as well as his challenger, Lena Oda, who were both running for uh, Central Committee Chairman, were basically asked um, by David Craig, who is a question of his own right, basically said, um, if... When it comes to 2016, are you going to support the Republican ticket top-down? Now, uh, Chris was actually very corrected to say, whoever wins the primary will be our candidates, and yes, I will support them from top-down. That means whoever our presidential nominee is, all the way down to the lowest uh, county or city uh, office that's going. And that's another thing, too. I like to see the Republican Party of Warren County support more individuals that are running uh, for city positions wherever they are in the county uh i've seen too many times they just uh they let these guys go and they don't support them again, again it's a primary but still uh usually primaries decide uh your city position so there's really not a primary per se for city officials at least in springboro i could be wrong in that but i will double check to make sure and, and uh mention it in another vlog uh, but which is interesting and they asked so i'll ask both 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 candidates would you support john Kasich, especially during his re-election to both said yes i have a problem with that because of the fact that again we are allowing our top leadership to run the entire party and basically give uh, uh marching orders to everybody that's bullshit we need to be more autonomous and and when our uh when our party leader in that particular case in this case is governor Kasich, when he's doing wrong we need to call him out for it and be quite honest I'm big, I, he won't get my support Mary Taylor may get my support, but I think she's been compromised since she's uh, been with John Kasich. Um, because just some of the statements I've seen her, her, her state, I think she's been, uh, I think she's either been hoodwinked or she's going along to get along type of situation. I don't know exactly. Uh, but again, if Mary Taylor, if you're watching this, uh, when you came to our Lincoln Day dinner in Warren County a year or so ago, <clears throat> and you spoke out about Obamacare, and you basically said, you're most ardent. Um, opposer of Obamacare there is in Ohio. And then at the same stroke in the same breath, you say, well, we can't get rid of it, so we better deal with it. Ma'am, if you had stuck around that night and not been three hours late blaming it on weather, I would have came up and talked to you and said, Mrs. Taylor, we have one word to, sell, to, to settle that particular situation with Obamacare. Nullify. The great sovereign state of South Carolina is in the process of doing that. If they do that, that would be our new Fort Sumter in regards. And I firmly support the entire legislation, governorship, and judicial branch of the great sovereign state of California if Nikki Haley signs that bill and puts it into law and hopefully it uh, doesn't get uh, attacked through the judiciary. We need to nullify Obamacare on a state level. Once we do that, we set a precedent. And uh, it will, it will rattle, it'll just rattle throughout the rest of the states. On the topic of secession, I want to say specifically, just like John Adams said when we were breaking away from the crown, that all 13 colonies need to be unanimous when we um, seceded from the crown. New York was the one that was hard to get along and, and to get to go with. We basically said, play with us now, you can, you can uh, deal with us later. And so John Adams was the mortar that held the brick uh, foundation of this republic together. So John Adams has been excellently... Um, um, his swan, his swan song has been totally sung in the book by David McCullough about his life and the miniseries, if you haven't seen it, which is excellently cast and excellently portrayed by Paul Giamatti, uh, really exemplifies uh, what John Adams did for the foundation of this country. So that's another issue altogether. Okay, um, another question was asked also when um, it came to nominating the chair or uh, voting on the, the executive committee uh, chairman between Ray Warwick and uh, Linda Burke, I believe, who uh, nominated herself. 
Uh, unfortunately, Lori Viers, who is uh, stepping down as uh, no, no longer nominating herself, but she was still vice chair, um, threw her um, her um, endorsement in for Ray Warwick, which is interesting enough because of the fact that um, one member stood up and thought that was totally morally wrong because of the fact that regardless if they're a descending uh, executive chair of some sort, that they shouldn't vote for any candidate, that they should abstain from endorsing any candidate publicly um, because of the fact that it biases the voting system. I have to agree because I wouldn't want her to vote for someone I didn't want because uh, I just think that's that's totally um, leading the, 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 all the voters and everybody by the nose. And nothing against Ray Work personally. I'm just saying, um, I think the whole process was handled wrong. And when she was um, called on it, she basically said, okay, I, I hear you, and, and blew him off. And I think that's wrong. Uh, I, do, I do totally think that's wrong. So nevertheless, I do want to let you know that, again, the Tea Party faction has taken over four-fifths of the Warren County GOP. This is a very good thing. With Chris Cook as our chairman, I do firmly believe we will have a lot more confidence, not only in the Republican Party, but we started to see the ascension of the Democrat uh, Party in, Geo in, in Warren County uh, stepping up because they saw the division within the G Warren County GOP, and there's a major uh, situation going on there. So nevertheless, uh, that's a major, major victory. Now, now that we've got that going and we can try and get some other things going, I think we can really work with our new leadership to try to um, bring forth some more unity and also at the same time, I, I want to stress that we want to continue the um, stump speeches as well as make sure that uh, we start supporting local candidates. On a political note, generally speaking, I also want to stress the GOP uh, in Ohio in particular to stop attacking the Libertarian Party. First of all, during my campaign, I mentioned, and you can see it in my campaign video, why is there even a Libertarian Party in the first place? It started in 1970 because the Republicans have lost their way. They don't even follow their own damn slate of tenements that they supposedly uh, hollowly find. They keep pushing for this George Bush big tent mentality. Instead, now they're sticking the nose under the tent and and, saw, and siding with the Obama regime on many, uh, many issues, such as NSA spying, amnesty, and everything else. Glowing testament of that is Eric Cantor um, losing his seat, and rightly so. Uh, the establishment better be worried because the fact that the Republicans like Peter King in New York and others better be quicking in their boots because that solidifies a Ron Paul, I'm sorry, Rand Paul or a Ted Cruz possible candidacy to the White House. I'm concerned about this in particular because the Democrats are going to have a very interesting uh, swing in who they may nominate. Uh, Hillary is still a threat, even though I think she's fainting with this um, with this uh, uh, head injury bullshit. I think she's going to come back and act like she's totally strong. I'll come back out swinging. And she's going to be forced to be reckoned with. So that is never uh, the case. Now I do one thing I want to mention lastly before I log off. Is, is the fact that RTE, Russia Today. Whenever there's a, a third party candidates running for president. Now for the past three presidential elections. They have third party debates. And no issues off the table. No question is off the table, and they go straight hardcore on asking questions and really pushing for facts. Uh, libertarian candidates, conservative uh, Constitution Party candidates, Green Party candidates, uh, socialists, you know, all these guys. Uh, I think it's a very, very interesting thing to see. And I would highly recommend that anyone in the uh, high school level school system, please, teachers, to uh, have your students watch the third-party debates on RT, download them, watch them, and ask questions on them. And then the most fundamental question you need to ask afterwards, or before, is why is it since Ross Pro is there no third-party candidates allowed in the major debates? That's because the Presidential Election Commission that they put together forbids third-party candidates because Ross Perot defeated George Bush, which gave us Bill Clinton. So that's why they don't allow third-party candidates. Uh, debaters to come on and uh, have presidential elections, which totally screws the American people because their voice cannot truly be heard. So that in itself is, is a authoritarian and fascist type of uh, uh, particular branch of the government that needs to be totally abolished and gotten rid of because of the fact that what are Republicans afraid of? Well, if you vote for a third party candidate, you take the votes away from Republican and elect a Democrat. That's bullshit. Because of the fact that, first of all, this is not John D. Rockefeller. Competition is not a sin. And if I'm a Republican and I'm debating with a Libertarian, and in my particular case, I'm a Jeffersonian Republican, so many issues, it's going to be a battle between me and the Libertarian. Okay? But the bottom line is this, is that it gives Republicans 
uh, more opportunity to be credible and to be precise in their responses and their and to uh, hold themselves to any pledges. So these are things you need to look at and really understand. Okay, so that is the latest update. Again, here's the white slate, and I gave you an update on who I abstained for and who I voted for. Uh, of course, they didn't have to vote at the at-large committee because they just merged all those together. I did vote for um, Doug Greathouse. And uh, um, had I known exactly at the time who Donna Lynch was, I would have voted for her. I've actually talked to her on a number of occasions, and I think she's a very excellent addition to that committee. So, Donna, I didn't realize who you were right away. I know I know a lot of faces. I don't always know names, especially since I got back into the swing of things there. Um, but uh, nevertheless, I think you were an excellent addition to that committee. So, and I mentioned that to you when I left. So, uh, congratulations. Okay, we have a really good leadership now in the Warren County GOP. I think they will listen to us uh, without a doubt. And uh, we were looking forward to having a more active GOP and hopefully supporting local candidates that are running for uh, townships and city councilships. So that's for sure. Okay, this is St. Thomas signing off. Remember to look, go to my uh, campaign website at thomasforohio.org. Check out my radio show at blogtalkradio.com slash truth emerges and look at the Sonny Thomas show. And just bear in mind that uh, I just got a taste of what's to come uh, in 2016 when I run again for a state central committee. Now that I know especially who my opponent is, I'm going to be watching him very closely. Bob McEwen, I'm coming for you, buddy. I'm coming for you. Because I guarantee you would not post any information who you voted for. If you did, it will not be accurate. It will be slated so you can bias people because you know I'm going to be coming for you. Very much so. <laughs> Alright, this is Sonny Thomas signing off. Slanch my half and uh, check out my uh, radio show at blocktalkradio.com slash truth emerges. And also check out uh, Alex Jones and my show as well on in Springboro at 106.9 FM. Slanch my half and thank you for listening and look forward to future reports here at thomasforohio.org.